get up and we're going to have to get out of our houses and we're going to have to stand in front of things, okay? We're going to have to get in their way, we're going to have to cost them money because they don't care about people. They couldn't give a crap about people. They're tearing up this community, they're tearing up this land, they don't care. So now we've got to make them listen by getting at them at what they care about, money, money and time. When we sat down in the first place and talked about the possibility of direct action before direct action had happened and before Amy's had moved onto the site, I said I didn't want anything to do with it. I said I thought the battle was lost once that came about and I'd done all my letter writing and I'd done all the, the sort of so-called proper channels and I said, you know, from now on it might be gimmicky but it's not really going to do any good. Um, I've had to change my mind on that. We've got such a huge amount of very high profile publicity out of this and I think that's, um, that's really been worth it. I just felt so, so sad, but so powerless. That I couldn't do anything about it. That they decided, the powers had decided that my countryside was being destroyed in my home, and that there was absolutely nothing I could do to stop it, or even to fight it, or anything. And I just, I don't know. I just never thought I'd be the sort of person to break the law. Really, that's great. <laughs> We went down to the demonstration on Friday morning and there were very few people there um, and we didn't think anything was really going to happen and then suddenly a, a, a lorry came with a porter cabin on it trying to turn into the site. No more roads! 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 They put the handcuffs on you and it hurts and you're taken away and you have absolutely no rights whatsoever. But at the same time you actually become quite calm and think, well, this is happening to me, I'm going to cope with it and I shall come out of it the other side. But I'm not the sort of person who does outrageous things, um, but I think they're rather proud of me, in a way. <laughs> One has to sometimes stand up and be counted, and that's what happened. I sat down and was counted. <laughs> well, basically, we arrived this morning to discover that um, they'd in sort of breached the, the area that we declared as a section section six stop and declared as squatted land and we're working on it. So in, squat, in squatting the land you sort of physically get in the way of where they want to go which you know, is always a good delaying tactic in trying to stop road schemes like this. <laughs> Park up, find, and then walk up to walk up to Salisbury Hill, yeah? Find the campaign office, which is like on Balbrook Lane. <laughs> Communication centre to the mobile. Over. Link check. Everything okay? The yellow tent floating around in the uh, compound there. So I don't think it's going to be a fire problem. Again, it was a Tuesday, if I remember, and uh, we, were ex we weren't sure how the evictions were going to happen, whether it was going to be all in one go or one at a time. As it happened, it was one at a time, and so we defended the houses one at a time. And, uh, you know, as the police and uh, sheriff came to each one, we... We uh, jumped up, but of course all, all the, the houses were barricaded from the inside, the groups of people were in there. <laughs>
bolt cutters again. Uh, what we've done is we've secured ourselves to one of their main entrances. Can you wipe one down the side, please? Yeah, why do you want to pull down the side? You want to pull down the side? Oi, excuse me. Are you looking for that? Uh, yeah, we're looking for Mr. Jerry Barnett. Um, I don't think he's um, in these offices. Uh, have you gone on to reception? Uh, we have. We bypassed them because uh, they won't let us speak to anyone. Uh, they, they won't. He's, he's actually out over the back somewhere. Where is Jerry Barnett now? Do you know? Jerry? Yeah, he's out the back somewhere, isn't he? Do you know which office is he's in? I don't even know who Jerry Barnett is. He's, he's, the, um, he's the contract manager on the, um, the M4 job. Environmental demonstrators have locked a company's main gates, forcing many workers to stay at home. Work was due to begin on a bypass for the village after a 30-year fight by local people. But those opposed to the new road had other ideas. The result, a showdown between contractors and protesters. In your news media, they're just hounds, you know, hungry for drama. Of course, we, you know, we need them. But, th but they need us too, you know, we, we do ask now, like if people come along that they give donations, you know, BBC Film Unit came along and they gave an £80 donation. I mean, it should be a symbiotic relationship, they're just, they're making a living off us, we think it's only fair that, you know, they contribute towards the campaign. five weeks now, living in trees for about four weeks. The numbers vary from, there's normally about 17 sleeping up here at night time and then maybe 25 in the day. So it's quite, there's lots of people in the trees. We've got, I don't know how many hammocks, probably about 12 different places, maybe more than that. And they're all linked up with walkways. We've got the kitchen over there and a place up there for taking videos and there's a loud speaker up there to, tell people down the actions of what's going on and then everyone kind of sleeps out in the different hammocks and things. This is like the central area. So we've got a telephone up here and lots of connections. <laughs> sailing down trees and also trying to get onto the platform and also trying to save branches and the chainsaw operator was quite illegally cutting sort of like branches around them you know he was lucky not to cut the rope of, of Pete a couple of times uh, Pete got onto the, uh, the actual platform a couple of times and they just swung out and he was just left in mid-air the same with Ben uh, Martin sort of like went round and uh, made to jump onto the platform misjudged it because it moved out and fell you know a good 50 feet All I'm asking you to do now is please, please keep calm, 
be oh. quiet. Let's let him get treated. Let's get the ambulance to him. But all this noise is doing nothing. And the police, the construction industry, the sheriff, uh, well, a representative from the sheriff's office just watched while it happened. It's just outrageous, you know, just outrageous. I mean, there's an article by John Vidal in The Guardian saying it's only a matter of time before somebody's killed on one of these campaigns, and it very nearly happened yesterday. Obviously, I'd very much like you to come down now. I sincerely think that if you come down now, it will go better for you in court than if you continue to resist. I also think if it matters to you, you've made your protest here just as far as you are going to do. And indeed, I, if you want to know what I think, I think you're damaging your cause by continuing any further. <laughs> and everyone else is a load of cowards because, I mean, these people are up sort of 60 foot downwards, high up, then, and then there are chainsaws coming at them. A friend of ours fell out of a tree 40, two weeks ago, fell 40 foot, he's really ill, and yet they're still up there trying to save the trees. This is what we'd really like to say is because everyone is saying you know that they are a bunch of outsiders they're render mob and everything they are not they are doing this on our behalf and everybody here is proud of them and the whole country should be proud of them <laughs> 